Welcome to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know, those government people that make laws, regulations, and ordinances that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people oh, that you elected. And the committees and the commissions that make decisions that directly affect you, whether you chose to go to that meeting or not, and that folks is why we're here plus one of us spreads rumors and the other one confirms them yeah we do. <laughs> and also there's humor in every meeting if you don't attend the meeting it's going to come back eventually there's humor at the top of the pot and at the bottom of the pot yeah, just like a bowling ball <laughs> <laughs> but anyway you want to attend these meetings as he points out because uh, there's a lot of things that go on here you know and they affect you over a period of time so you don't know. be surprised by that little tax bill you might see increase or something. <laughs> or a big tax bill you might see. <laughs> or your big water bill that could, you know, show up unexpectedly or your when you go to turn assessment. the tap on. <laughs> right, right, all those things. Yes. But let's get on with it, shall we? We shall. We shall. Okay. <laughs> uh, special committee for uh, M24. We'll talk about that. Uh, construction is going to go on in the year 2019. Say M. Yeah, yep, MDOT definitely has a big part in this say. Uh, January uh, 30th was the Oxford Village Council meeting, and we'll discuss that briefly. And the Oxford Area Cable Commission, which you know <laughs> a thing or two about. And if we get time, we'll even try to touch on Pollyann Trail meeting that they well, had. Well then, you, okay. you've got a full plate. We do, and that plate is partially yours. Uh -huh. And here we go. <laughs> and when you throw me up, All right. <laughs> Let's talk first about the uh, Oxford Village uh, um, Council. Uh, interesting thing uh, involving that uh, particular meeting was that uh, they had, remember 98 Burdick Street? 98? Or Glassby? I mean Glassby Street, Glassby that's correct. Street. See, I tried to change it. Watch those humor, or those well, uh, rumors, they'll go around. Hold on. Burdick and yeah. Okay. Burdick, yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Okay, Glassby. Glassby, okay. 98 Glassby Street has been on the table for what? Two years, three years, up for sale? Well, what did they buy it for? Well, originally they paid $700,000 for it. Ooh, what are they hoping to get that now? That was in the year 2006, I believe. And what are they hoping to get now that it's, that it's well, <laughs> accumulated all its value? Are you ready for this? <laughs> it's evaluated at 305000 Well, an excellent investment if I ever say so. Yeah, <laughs> I'm all for that, you know. <laughs> Buy high, sell low. That's a good deal mm. for somebody, <laughs> but not for us. <laughs> right? I think Warren Buffett just choked. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might have, yeah. So anyway, that's what goes on in your community, folks. Uh, but anyway, so the advantage of selling this property, of course, is that you will, yeah, upon uh, d uh, developer building homes. Get that homes, monkey off our get back. That, yeah, <laughs> get that monkey off our back because there's no income coming in off right. that property now right. because it's owned by the village. And if they build homes... Uh, there be can you say tax again? Yeah. On the okay. other hand, if they build tax exempt property, <laughs> yeah, then there's nothing, no return. So, so hoping for a taxable and situation. How, do, how does that pay the bills? By the way, it's non-taxable. Uh, How's that work? A question that's been asked <laughs> for centuries. <laughs> right. Well, in this case, there's a company called Clearview Homes, uh -oh. and uh, they want to build 16 homes over in that area. Regular old homes. R uh, well, new single homes. family, yeah, residents yeah. in an R1 district. Actually, it's, I believe, an R2 or R3 district in right now. In contrast to what, the 76 uh, condos Coast. or apartments that were going to be built there? Right. That was a proposal, of course. Yeah. That mm -hmm. just crammed too, mi too much into a short amount of space. But anyway, this company has come before the um, village council a couple of times, sure. and they've been negotiating, and uh, they had a few conditions set forward. Um, one of the things was that uh, they need a certain amount of time in order to check out um, if there's any pollutants on the property. I think the village invested some funding into I was say researching that. By, that. by now, they should know that. Yeah, they did research <laughs> that, and uh, the final um, arrangement with this company uh, was to have it received as is property. Oh, it's all the responsibility once they've agreed to it. And they're looking. Like, you're looking for a framework uh, in terms of time. Caveat Yeah, right. Say that again. Caveat emptor. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Love those French words. I love them too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, I don't think it's French. But, uh, anyway, she uh, they uh, agreed to pretty much everything uh, that the village council requested last time they came before the village council. Uh, they did put a ten thousand dollar deposit in escrow. 
Um, and then, there, of course, they're talking about the number of days in which uh, the property would be received. And they're looking at roughly 30 days uh, for a final uh, inspection oh. of the property. And then uh, Joe Young, village manager, said you should probably apply 60 days with working days, which would be equal to 90 days for the completion for them to take it over. So pretty much this uh, council um, agreed that this is the route that should go. Let me see, what else? So that means the existing building gets torn down? Well, there's an old building there and it's going to be, you know, wiped okay. out. Okay. Yep. And I believe the there was a, a storage unit there, an old storage unit. Within the, historical. within the existing within the building? No, no, outside oh, of the building. Oh, really? oh. It's like a cement building. It's oh, a grain, okay. granary, a house granary or something along that. Which, al which also bites the dust. <laughs> which will also bite, bite the dust. I don't think there's any way that they can move this. They, I think they're going to take a stone that's marked with the date that was built and maybe give that to the museum huh. as a possibility. That could be. I've heard conversation about that. So. I present you with an old rock. Right, with an old rock. <laughs> Now, uh, Tom Kennis, who's on this board, he said that uh, uh, one of the issues that came up was a mortgage um, um, expense or a survey that would have to be done on you know, the mortgage. And uh, I think it's going to be like $200 or so. And he said that he wasn't for paying that. Well, uh, immediately out jumped Eric Dolan. He said, look, this has been going on for a long time. He said, let's settle it. We're just talking a small amount of money here. Let's go forward with it. You know, charge. He's leading the charge. Right. And you can hear the trumpet playing, and yeah, that would be him. They're running around. Yeah, okay. Anyhow. Yeah, that amounts just an entry fee into the race. <laughs> right, just into the race. So anyway, so they, they went forward with it, and they approved it. All right. Um, Jerry Griffin was a representative for the company there for Clear, Clear, uh, Clearview Homes. And it looks like Clearview, Clearview Homes, I'll spit it out some point or another here. Uh, we'll go forward with this. All right. Um, there will be involved, of course, Nowak and Kraus, which is the engineers from the village, and also McKenna and associates will be involved as, the as yeah. they go on as planners. So those are pretty much uh, formalities, and that took care of that. That was a quick session. Um, Next. Yeah, and I think <laughs> Suva Sardar uh, ran this meeting, and she did a good job in, in keeping good. it moving along. Good. So sometimes this meetings, one didn't run until midnight. Sometimes meetings sort of spread out and yeah. disappear into the fog, but... Sue keeps them on target. Right. <laughs> well, when you see uh, people sitting on the console board and they slither away <laughs> after two or three hours, you know that's a bad meeting. I don't so. know if they slither away or just collapse. <laughs> yeah, or there, there, were a, there was a packed house of people, you know, that came originally, and now you ha you're looking at one So how person. long was that meeting, anyhow? Uh, it was rather short. I think oh, it was good. like about an hour long. Oh, that's good. Yep. That's normally what they run, an hour and a half. Special uh, committee meeting also was uh, held, and that was through the um, resources of the DDA, Downtown Development Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Frost, of course, led this, but he's going to be leaving, and so, and as a matter of fact, he's gone as we, as we're even here, as we speak. As we speak, not really gone though, because he lives in Oxford, in the village. <clears throat> so he made it very clear that he would be working with the DDA and probably involved in some of the other meetings, you know, they have in the village. So he could provide a good segue to whoever takes over next. He did, and he could, and, and he will. will. <laughs> with that, we'll be back right after this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Welcome to American Legion in Oxford for the best fish on Fridays. That's right, from noon to 8.30, you can get the best walleye in Michigan. You can get walleye, baked cod, chicken strips, baked potatoes, and more. On the hall side of the Legion, oh, hello there, friends. You can have 12 friends on a table, any one of the best military museums in Michigan. And the dining side, oh, hello again. More comfortable with many four-seat tables and a couple of five-seaters. Now, on Friday, we have to usually have about four to 500 of best friends for our fish. Carryout, you bet. We have 50 to 60 carryouts at the post. We have some young friends with the birthdays and some of our best seniors at the post. Oh yeah, waitresses, they go like a track waitress to get your food. If you have never enjoyed our secrets, famous walleye at the Legion, come on in every Friday from noon to 8.30 at the American Legion Post, 108 on 130 East Rainer Road, Oxford. Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the M24 Construction Special Committee. MDOT. MDOT. 
Right, and it was formed by the Downtown Development Authority to get things moving. In terms of plans and that kind of thing, because the year is 2019, when the proposed The only thing they will can't do up. is move the buildings aside. <laughs> no, they're pretty much stuck with those. Now they dig a tunnel underneath the town. Uh, but maybe not. No, that might not work. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Joe Frost, as I pointed out earlier, will be leaving. And he appointed uh, a new chairman of this particular group, Ed Hunwick, who's not new to it. He's been oh. on the DDA for some time. Matter of fact, it seems like I can remember Ed coming before the village council when I was on that council. And uh, they kind of threw him to the um, um, vultures oh. <laughs> at the time oh. and tried to present a program for streetscape, which involved $4.8 million, and he had to represent that. And uh, that didn't run fairly well <laughs> at that time because <laughs> they had no money. Oh, well. So, but now uh, they're finding ways to generate funds. They are going to ha get grants, that kind of thing. Uh, as proposal to to back their their movement on this, but they're going even to, even grants demand money right. from both sides. Well, you better know how much you're going to spend, right. and that's what this is all about. And and in order to know what you're going to spend, you got to know what you're going to do with streetscape. And this whole project evolves around the streetscape, and also encompasses while the main street is torn up. How do you support the businesses in town? And it's not just the street. They're probably going to go after the infrastructure, too, the sewers and water well, mains. Well, there's water uh, main and uh, sewer line that runs yeah. down the street, which I believe is put in at the turn of the century. So that, of course, is <laughs> we don't want to end up with a situation like they have in other Just communities. hope they don't give that to the museum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, take a note on that, will you? Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, representatives there uh, was a... a Diverse group, uh, business people, uh, financial people, bank, Oxford Bank, uh, community uh, leaders such as uh, Suba Sardet and um, s many others, you know, involved in um, both construction and their background. Plus, if you uh, got a business, they're going to be affected. <laughs> yeah, they will. And they're actually they came down to the point where they said, "Let's go to the businesses with a questionnaire." And get some feedback for them, uh, you know, from them as sure. to how they want to do this. One of the concerns is the DPW is the fact that if you're going to put um, a sound barrier of some type, you know, shrub, be it shrubs, trees, or whatever, make sure that you, it's friendly enough that when you have snow, you have a way to get rid of the snow and uh, keep the uh, street clean. Absolutely. You know, and area. from the business point of view, a sound barrier can also occlude people's view of given businesses in downtown area. So you mm -hmm. want those businesses to be visible too. Absolutely. And they did talk about lighting and that kind of thing. And by the way, uh, they're going to run all the way down to the uh, south end of town in, the, in what's part of the uh, DDA district. With lighting? With lighting. Oh, yep. wonderful. And they're going to also provide some aesthetics in that direction as well, so that they're included and it's all tied in. And that'll give so, impetus to new growth of business right. there. And of course, it's all contingent on what monies are available. And they have yet to define exactly what they want. Um, but they've got till 2019, but they're not going to wait till the last minute. Time is ticking yep. on. Well, if they start the grant process, for example, early, uh, they should have everything in place by the time uh, MDOT starts ripping up the road. Two years. Two years, yeah. So it'll be here before you know it, folks. Um, if you have any suggestions, too, as to what you'd like to see, uh, contact the DDA uh, department or village uh, Joe Young and discuss it with him. Uh, and he can bring it forward because he's part of the committee as well. Okay. Uh, good thing they got going here. Um, they want to, of course, make it pedestrian friendly. Whoop, there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want people to get run over. Uh, they want to control the uh, noise, the traffic. Uh, there was discussion on trucks and uh, what to do with that traffic. Uh, do, do they have an estimate once it starts how long it will take? Uh, it'll take roughly about six months, I believe, to seven now, months. Rochester did a, a similar thing. They did. Uh, they might learn how to uh, minimize impact on business while that's going on. Well, there are a couple of um, cities or small villages or large villages that uh, have gone through this before, right. and they're going to use them as models. Good, you know. Good. And uh, those don't try to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> no, those connections have been made 
uh, with those municipalities. So definitely feedback that we're getting will come, come into play here. Um, anyway, noise reduction is one thing. Maintenance concerns. Uh, Subasar brought up the fact that w once you get all this in place as far as flowers, trees, all this kind of thing, mm. and shrubbery, whatever you're going to do, uh, somebody's got to maintain it and take care of it. And oh, how, sure. Who's going to do that and how much money is it going to take to do it? So it all has to come into the budgetary. And some uh, elements of that might be seasonal, where it might be okay in the summertime. They may have to displace it mm -hmm. somewhere else during the winter to allow for snow removal. Right, and there's a number of different concepts that they can use in our placement of these and still make it, you know, mm -hmm. look great. The, the main thing is uh, they want people to feel comfortable when they're downtown that they're not going to be run over by a truck <laughs> or, or something like that nature. Yeah, it's a place where you can take your kids and, and enjoy the downtown. A lot of great shopping down there. And the emphasis will be, of course, on marketing uh, for those particular businesses during this phase, as right. well as directing traffic signs and those kind of things. So there's a lot of things that come into play here. And uh, I think it's good that they put this committee together, don't you? It'll be exciting times. <laughs> it will be an exciting time. Now let's talk about the Oxford uh, Area Cable Commission, shall we? Oh, kidoki. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and that meeting was held on January 23rd. And, uh, of course, went through the preliminaries of Pledge of Allegiance and read the minutes, of course, for uh, December. Uh, bills initially were $28,401.33. Right. And there were two sets of bills, one for 2016 and one for 2017. And what was the one for 2017? Off the top of my head? Mm. <laughs> $6,679.24. You had a crib. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's right there. Okay, so anyway, so that he's right. There was two uh, expense uh, reports. Uh, Year-to-date expense account was reviewed uh, quickly. No problems, issues there. Invoice uh, distribution report was also handled, and, and uh, no problem there. Went on to the next item, which uh, employee handbook. Does anybody know <laughs> where the handbook went? <laughs> Does anybody know? <laughs> <laughs> Did it ever return? No, it never, never returned. returned. <laughs> it's been it's still floating. It, it's, 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 I, think, I think the stage that it's at is that the lawyer is actually reviewing the book. and uh, Which stage did it go on? <laughs> was it the <laughs> early stage? Or the <laughs> Terminal stage. <laughs> Terminal stage. Okay. Nobody knows where it's at, but it'll well, show uh, up eventually. Yeah, we expect Kinda to see like it. Kind of like long lost relative. Optimistically by next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> if not that one, the next meeting. So make sure you folks stay tuned for this one. <laughs> okay. But it'll be interesting. I'm sure it'll be quite uh, detailed when it's De finished. Detailed? Complete? Complete. What was another word? When does the stage and leave again? And comprehensive. <laughs> right. Got it. Okay. So the next issue came up was a drone. Remember we talked about getting a drone. Yeah, they've been droning on about that for a long time. They've been time. <laughs> droning on about it. Well, they shel shelved it this time, didn't they? Yes, they did. And, uh, shot it out of the sky. <laughs> <laughs> shot the drone out of the sky. Yeah, actually because of some financial issues that are involved yeah. down the line here and looking at a long-range projection. You could say it ran out of gas. You could say it ran out of gas. only it took gas. <laughs> we'll run out of gas. And talk about running out of gas, we'll be back right after this, folks. <laughs> Canine Stray Rescue does just that. Rescue stray dogs for new families. But they need your help. Become a volunteer at Canine Stray Rescue League of Michigan. Take dogs for walks, help them socialize with others, and help them get adopted. Fill out an application and help a family add a new member today. Minutes by minutes, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about the uh, Cable Commission meeting that they had. Yep. And uh, we just got past the drone, yep. but we want to explain why they shelved the drone issue. Well, we're going to experience some uh, shortfall in revenue. How short? Well, AT&T, which is currently a 
substantial provider of uh, funds for the uh, OACCC mm -hmm. is converting from UVerse to DISH. UVerse being a cable uh, system uh, provides a certain amount of revenue per customer and DISH is a satellite system which provides nothing. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> okay. But it's going to be a, a ongoing process, and we'll mm -hmm. see a ongoing decrease <laughs> in revenue relative to the AT and T uh, portion of it coming from the right. Oxford Township, Addison Township, Leonard, and and, Ad and uh, Oxford Village. Well, I think it's a, a good good thing that this uh, board did what they did. You know, with the that particular expense at this time. We might need the money, you never yeah, know, yeah. right? Bank it now. Right. <laughs> now, the other thing that they wanted to talk about is appointment of officials. Um, they appointed Bill Dunn as the secretary. <laughs> that was kind of funny. I found that humorous, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Bill had lots of questions about what he was required to do as a secretary. No, he's not bringing coffee, he said. <laughs> <laughs> there were no instructions, but someone did hand him a pen. <laughs> they did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he accepted it graciously. I know. And Bill is quite capable. <laughs> Suba Sarnett was reappointed as the chair. Yep. And uh, let me see, vice chair was uh, Charlene Sotherby. And the treasurer. Leonard. Was and Laurie treasurer is Lori Fisher. From Madison Township. Yeah, no real big surprises there other than Bill Dunn. Right. <laughs> I'm a what? Sorry, Bill. I'm a what? <laughs> <laughs> you guys did this to me. <laughs> okay. And of course, Ed Hunwick serves on this board, and he became the official <clears throat> worker bee. Yes. Shows that's, you what happens when you don't show up at that. <laughs> right. That's what happens when you don't show up. Okay. So Ed, he'll accept it with a smile, I guess, and yep. take on the heavy load that he's going to get. I think the first thing he's going to get thrown at him is the um, employee handbook. Oh. Uh, Ed, can you find it? <laughs> and they had lecture committees, back. too. Yes, they did. You tell me more. No, but you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to force me to. Yes. Okay, there's a tech committee and Lori Fisher so that she would take that on. All right. And what does the tech committee do? Well, uh, in terms of long-term planning for refreshing equipment and what have you and the tech, and looking at new technologies that might affect us, yeah. Okay. So Of course, we will act as advisors to them, especially you, because you're, tech, you're it, a real techie. You really think so, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> real good. Then there's some facilities. Uh, committee and that would be Sue Pasardet and Bill Dunn. All right, train that. And what what do they do? They hunt for property. <laughs> <laughs> they facilitate the <laughs> ongoing search for property. The what, what does <laughs> facilitate mean? It means to facilitate something. <laughs> anyway, that's the way they used to do it They're in school. Facilitating right? our facility. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay, uh, manager's report from Bill Dunn was given, and let me see. And he wanted to point out the AT and T is the quickly. manager report from who? Bill, or Bill Dunn. Bill Service. Our service manager. No. <laughs> We're going to give Bill Dunn another job here if he's not careful. <laughs> you notice how you slip him right into that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a rumor, by the way. That's a pretty strong rumor, though. Mm, I've got to no. tell you. Right? Mm. Maybe not. I think <laughs> Bill Service would complain about that one. I do believe. <laughs> okay. But anyway, so uh, he, was, he explained what the situation with ATT was. AT&T, of course, will be leaving eventually. Uh, and a little more rapidly than what he anticipated. Mm. Yeah, uh, we did put a projection of, course, of three of course, years. Of course, not but all AT&T customers might choose to go to Dish. Some might right. go to Charter, which might preserve some portion of that income mm -hmm. stream. Right. Now, a good thing he did talk about Connie's Kitchen, which is you know just been syndicated to five different locations. I know. I know. So that's, that's a very that's successful great program. And congratulations, Connie. You betcha. Yep. And let me see, that pretty much took care of that. Now let's hit on very quickly, but this is a Pollyann Trail. And I want to say one thing that the Pollyann Trail um, director or um, manager um, that handles the trails, the yep. trail manager, Linda Moran. Moran. Mm -hmm. Linda Moran does a terrific job out there, I got to tell you. Uh, she presented a program before this board in which she cited that she needed tools because when she took over the job, the tool crib was completely either empty or it had equipment that didn't operate. And so she asked for um, a new trimmers, hedge trimmers, and she also asked for um, gloves and a wheelbarrow and other things to, to make the job you know, feasible. Uh, she requested roughly a total of about uh, 
$1,660 to do this, and they had the money and the funding, so went ahead and approved it. It's a good, good. thing. Um, then Linda went on further to say that there's an event happening on June 11th at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., and it's uh, a Run Michigan Cheap is what it's called, a uh, 5, a 10K. What was that last five, word? It's cheap. Cheap, 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 cheap. cheap. I see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's actually held by a company called Frank Race Management. And uh, they have two programs, 10 5K runs. And one is June 11th at 8 a.m. and ends at 1 p.m. It starts at the Orion Township Parks. Where does area. the cheap part come in? It's really inexpensive, and oh, if you have okay. any wind left in you after 10 miles... <laughs> and your sneakers still have any treads left on them? <laughs> right. And, right. And they're also going to have another one September 9th. Now, you're probably wondering what this money is going to be raised for. Better be raised for goats. Goats? Yeah, they're going to eat up all the stuff. I heard something interesting about those goats. What did you hear? Not only will they trim the grass, but they're impervious to poison ivy and poison sumac. They are. And they have a goat that actually, when he's on his two hind legs, can reach about six feet high. So watch out for those low-hanging trees. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, I want to say that uh, Lena Moran is really pro-goats. Who does, she says, who doesn't love baby goats? <laughs> and not only that, when they're out there doing their job, they are restrained by a solar-powered electric fence. Solar powered electric fence. Where did you hear that? It was a rumor. <laughs> okay. That's one of many. <laughs> Just have to pay close attention here, folks. Well, we don't want the goats wandering off. <laughs> no, really. Chewing up someone's daisies. <laughs> you just, actually, you just get some poison ivy and wave it in front of them. They'll come, come oh, around. That's true. You yeah. just love it. <laughs> then you're going, ah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so that's what she was talking about. Now, they did uh, provide uh, elected people for this board. Mike McDonald, who hits it up, was reappointed again. He said, gee, humbly accepts again. <laughs> uh, Donnie Steele was put in as treasurer, does a great job there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce Pearson was treasurer last, uh, last term. So, uh, Bruce, you're kicked to the curb. I hate uh. to tell you this, but anyway, so uh, Ron Slowinski was appointed secretary, and actually, Joe Young was appointed recording secretary. So there's apparently two secretaries. One, one keeping one, an eye on the other one. Well, kind of yeah. like I do for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that works? Okay. Uh, let me see. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's been some cuttings that they did along Pollyann Trail, and they're a mess. So they're going to hire a gentleman who's agreed to come in and clean it all up for a, a mere amount of $5,000 to do it. How long is the Pollyann Trail, anyhow? Oh, it's, it's for miles and miles and miles. It's all over. Lots of miles. Is that metric or English? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could be metric. Tell me more. What's going on? Well, we do have meetings. Lots of meetings, as a matter of fact. On 2-7 at 7 p.m., the Village of Oxford Planning Commission. Hmm. And on that same day at 6.30, the Oxford Board of Education is meeting over at Oxford High School for School of Choice. So I might want to attend that one. Mm -hmm. uh, on 2-8 at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Board of Trustees, your favorite, you're on it. Yes. <laughs> and on 2-9 at 6 o'clock, the Oxford or Addison Township Z Z uh, ZBA. <laughs> <laughs> ZBA. <laughs> might check on that one because ZBA sometimes get canceled. A lot of times, actually. Um, uh, at 7 o'clock that same day, Oxford Township Planning Commission. And on 2-13 at 7 o'clock, the Village of Leonard Council. And it's also at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township ZBA. Same warning, could be canceled, you never know. Uh, and at 6 o'clock, at Addison Township Board of Trustees. Lots going on, Oxford Township and Addison Township. Pick a meeting. Yep. <laughs> this is Menace by Meta. And you <laughs> are. No, I was going to ask who you are. <laughs> I'm Dave Kenny. And I'm Elton Nichols. Catch you next time right here. <laughs>